Hello everybody and welcome back um, to our lecture series. We are still in the midst of our of our discourse uh, concerning the civil uh, the mid 20th century civil rights movement. We have just wrapped up um, the passage. Uh, in our last lecture, we had just uh, wrapped up the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church um, that killed four little girls. Um, uh, and, and really sort of underscored Birmingham, the Birmingham nickname for for the city of Birmingham, uh, the assassination of President Kennedy some two months later, and the ascension to the office of president of Lyndon Johnson, a very prominent Southern Democrat or Dixiecrat who shocked um, really the nation in, uh, with his support of civil rights. Um, Johnson, during his administration, uh, during his administration, he pushed for and received um, a, a legislative bill defending civil rights, the first since Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, which, uh, among many things, prohibited job discrimination on the basis of race, gender, religion, national origin, um, as well as banning segregation of public accommodations. Now, Dixiecrats in the Senate tried to filibuster uh, and, and also other segregationists vowed to defy the law. Um, to compel the segregationists to accept the law, uh, the act also stipulated that the Attorney General had the authority to deprive states of federal funds from any program that practiced discrimination. Uh, it also allowed persons who had been discriminated against to appeal to the Equal Opportunity Commission for Redress. Now, in the aftermath uh, of the of, of school success, um, of the success uh, of the civil rights movement, of the Civil Rights Act, I should say, SNCC, CORE, and the NAACP all decided to pursue a major voter registration drive and flex African American voting power. The first real instance of um, of uh, community um, electoral power since the end of Reconstruction. Now, registration, now, now this registration drive um, was, was, uh, was, um, was really a continuation of this, um, of the confrontation, of this incessant confrontation with established Jim Crow, um, uh, it, with this entrenched Jim Crow uh, social philosophy. And it was also meant to, uh, to um, challenge one of the provisions that really weren't uh, protected uh, that that really didn't come into protection by the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and that was voting rights. Um, since uh, and we discussed previously in a number of lectures, um, the 15th Amendment, which had given African American the right to vote, and we also um, discussed the 19th Amendment in, a, in previous lectures, uh, which gave women the right to vote. Um, during Reconstruction, African American men had exercised their voting rights and sent more than a dozen members, uh, African American members, to Congress. They elected a number of local and state officials to uh, local offices as well. Um, we also saw that the rise of uh, freedmen and anti slave owner governments stirred up resentments that led to redemption politics and the wholesale disenfranchisement of the African American community. Um, through literacy tests and poll taxes, uh, which were ununiformly applied, uh, the discrimination was uh, the discrimination also often was accompanied by beatings, public intimidations, um, and on many occasions lynchings, just wholesale murder. Um, these measures held the vast majority of African Americans without voting rights. Uh, the push for voting rights began years earlier as CORE and SNCC had both led efforts between 1961 and 1963 to register African Americans in, uh, contra in, uh, in, in contravention of Dixiecrat practices. But they had met stiff resistance from the local segregationists who um, employed and tried uh, a, a variety of measures, a, 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 um, including violence and social intimidation. Uh, in 1964, both sides were drawn to Mississippi, uh, where the state um, 
and really Mississippi was the biggest obstacle to African American voting. We have to remember that Medgar Evers was murdered on his front lawn for attempting to register African American voters. Um, Mississippi uh, in 1964, um, only six percent of African Americans in Mississippi were registered to vote, the lower percentage in the republic. Uh, the voting operation was given the uh, the code name Freedom Summer. Uh, and it was uh, led by Robert Moses of SNCC. Now, African Americans rallied to Moses and taught locals how to register voters. Um, SNCC also sent European American volunteers to aid uh, in the registration. Now, Robert Moses, uh, the, now, now the logic behind this was uh, that the media would focus more intently on the operations uh, if there was a ethnically mixed uh, group that provided this um, this service and would also provide a bit of protection. Had segregation, it would be, and this was Robert Moses and, and the other leaders thinking that the segregation that would be less likely to attack the volunteers had viciously as before, uh, due to the media coverage, but also due to the uh, the ethnically mixed groups that went out. Uh, the plan halfway um, succeeded. Had TV reporters and news journalists flocked to Mississippi to cover the events, um, they, they, they found that sadly the volunteers were not free from harm. Uh, on June 21st, 1964, three SNCC volunteers, uh, James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and John Schwerner, were sent to investigate the bombing of a church in Philadelphia, Mississippi. The three were arrested and held for several hours on alleged traffic violations. Um, the, uh, the, the three were released that evening and they disappeared, never to be seen alive again. For six weeks, local, state, and federal authorities searched for the three. Uh, the search ended when the three, uh, when the three boys were found, when the three young men were found, buried in an earthen dam. Uh, examinations of the bodies revealed that both Goodman and Scherner were killed by single gunshots while Cheney had been beaten to death. Now, the murders, as well as the dissension within the ranks of the volunteers, um, had tensions over leadership roles flared within, uh, with regularity. Um, and, and also the constant barrage by the attack of these segregationist authorities, these governments. Uh, more than 1,000 arrests, 80, uh, 80 mob attacks, 67 bombings, and the fears of reprisals of more than 80... Um, um, well, let me go back. Uh, there were a number of things uh, besieging this, this voter uh, drive campaign, the besieging Freedom Summer. Um, the murders were one thing. Uh, no, nobody could get over the murders. Uh, it blew um, the plan of protection all wide open. There was uh, open dissent. Well, I, I shouldn't say open dissension, but there was noticeable dissension within the ranks. Um, of, of the volunteers. Uh, tensions flared over leadership roles and opportunities um, with regularity, I should say. Uh, more than 1,000 of the volunteers uh, were arrested. There were more than 80 mob attacks, uh, 67 bombings, um, and uh, just general reprisals by the, by the, uh, by the local community either upon the volunteers or upon the local African-American community. Uh, but in the face of such fears, more than 80,000 Mississippians registered to vote, joining the Mississippi Freedom Democrats Party, a, uh, a, a Democrat splinter group from the um, Democratic Party, which was at the time laden, top-heavy really, with old-line, old-guard uh, segregationists. Now, um, at the Democratic Convention uh, later that year um, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the Democratic Party uh, the Democratic Party leader refused to recognize the MFDP, the Mississippi Freedom Democrat Party. Um, they, re they refused to recognize them had the delegation from Mississippi in favor of the segregationist delegates who represented uh, Mississippi. Now, Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, a sharecropper,
who had been evicted from her farm after 18 years of service due to her organizing efforts uh, and the leader of the MFDP delegation won a ban against racial segregation, uh, racial discrimination, I should say, at future Democratic Party conventions. It was a remarkable feat, um, one that you really cannot underscore. Um, by all accounts, they knew they weren't going to be seated, but I don't think that anybody had any idea that she would win a ban against future uh, racial discriminations against African Americans. Um, it, it was, it was uh, really, I really can't put into words just how remarkable that was and how remarkable of a woman Fannie Lou Hamer is. Um, she is the top, she is the subject of her own fast fact. And uh, I truly impl uh, implore everybody to just go in and look at her work. It was a truly remarkable, she was a truly remarkable woman for her time and someone whose legacy enriches all of our lives. Um, or at least in my opinion, her legacy enriches all of our lives. Now, uh, Freedom Summer. Uh, the Volunteers of Freedom Summer, in addition to enrolling new voters, established 30 new schools throughout Mississippi. Uh, the schools were multi-purposed. Um, uh, they highlighted the gross inequality between the schools in Mississippi and to provide, and they were also founded to provide quality instruction to the children of the impoverished. Um, the, the Freedom Schools were administered by volunteers and taught uh, courses on civil rights, uh, black history, and of course leadership development. In addition to the basic instruction in arithmetic, reading, and writing, uh, the old three R's. Now more than 3,000 students were enrolled in these schools and the accomplishments of the of Freedom Summer and the Selma Montgomery March set the stage for the most sweeping accomplishment of the mid 20th century civil rights movement, the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Um, now to break the entrenched power of the segregationist uh, manpower, civil rights advocates pursued voter registration. Uh, the enforcement of Jim Crow rested on exclusive political power. A, a challenge to the political power could upend Jim Crow. Um, those who challenged this literally risked their lives. Hamer spent much of her life as a sharecropper in Mississippi. Uh, in 1962, uh, workers with the SCLC and SNCC arrived in Montgomery County. Hamer's life will be forever changed by their arrival. She joined their efforts and helped others register the vote. She was evicted from a farm where she sharecropped, as mentioned before. Uh, and then this was dangerous in Mississippi. And Hamer was targeted for assault. After one particular assault, she was beaten so badly, uh, the, the attack was so devastating that she suffered permanent kidney and eye damage. Yet, Hamer refused uh, to back down in the face of the violence. She became a founding member of the MFDP in 1964 and had, as uh, I stated earlier, she led that, degradation, uh, that, that delegation to the Democratic National Convention to push for the political representation that her community desired. Uh, now, although the MFDP delegation was not recognized at the DNC at the Democratic National Convention, uh, the convention did agree to ban racial discrimination at future conventions, as stated earlier, and Hamer would go on to launch the Freedom Farm Cooperative, which allowed people to grow their own food. Hamer also founded a garment factory to provide jobs. She started a daycare. She raised funds for housing. And Hamer, uh, who, if, if it wasn't um, clear about um, segregation practices in earlier lectures, let me just reiterate, she had little to no formal schooling. Um, uh, it was very, very rare for African Americans to achieve uh, an education. Um, for most African Americans, for the poor and even members of the, of the middle class, um, they would simply go to just enough school and then they would have to join a family business. The, um, the upper middle class and the elite uh, of the African American community completed not just primary school, but they completed secondary school, and they went on to college. It was a very, uh, particularly in the uh, the rural southeastern states, it's some never had any formal schooling. Um, 
It, it was uh, it, you, you simply um, learned to share crop. You uh, cooked. You uh, crabbed. You fished. You you did something to bring in uh, some sort of money. You got to work very quickly. You didn't. Uh, you didn't. In many instances, you still didn't even learn to read. Um, but uh, but yes, uh, Hamer with very little school schooling. Um, she had, she ended up uh, er, uh, earning. She ended up being awarded multiple honorary degrees and was widely acknowledged for her for her contribution during her lifetime. Now, on February eighteenth, nineteen sixty five, Jimmy Lee Jackson of uh, of Alabama, a uh, a timber worker who was active in local church affairs and voter affairs, attended a church rally to protest the jailing of a local SCLC leader. At the meeting, uh, ha at the meeting, um, Jackson attended with his mother and his grandfather. Uh, had the meeting died down, the attendees left the church, where they were attacked by police and state troopers. Jackson was beaten and shot as he shielded his mother and his grandfather um, from, from, uh, from, from gunfire. Now, he died a week later from his wounds. On March 3, 1965, King attended Jackson's funeral and made one of his most, uh, um, I should say, politically charged comments. It was, a criti it was an open criticism. It was his first criticism of President Lyndon Johnson. Uh, and he directly asked why the government prioritized the safety of the South Vietnamese and not one of their own citizens at home. Uh, Jackson's death, much like the death of Emmett Till, became a rallying cry, a, a rallying moment for the civil rights organizers to push the, the government to act and produce um, voting rights legislation. Now, King and the SELC arrived in Selma earlier to help SNCC and the Dallas County Voters League in their long-term struggle with voters registration. Uh, had the previous efforts, um, had the previous efforts, the organizer planned marches and public demonstrations to highlight the violence that accompanied segregationist efforts to block African American political participation. Uh, they planned a four-day march on March 7th from Selma to Montgomery, a distance of over 50 miles. Uh, their intent was to petition then Alabama Governor George Wallace. Um, now, Wallace forbade the march, declaring that he could not protect the marchers. Uh, Wallace was an avowed segregationist, and he would not defend the marchers. It is really what, what it boiled down to. Not only could he uh, have defended the marchers, but at TV shows uh, captured, Wallace had police officers mounted on horseback and, uh, and these horseback um, officers attacked the marchers as they approached, uh, the, as they approached forcing them to turn back from the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Now, the event became known as Sunday, Bl um, Bl Bloody Sunday. Uh, it horrified viewers um, and again embarrassed the nation on an international uh, level, on, on the international stage. Now, with that, we'll break and we'll come back with uh, we'll come. We'll continue on with our lecture with our discussion with civil rights. Um, as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know what you thought about this lecture. And I'm Ted. And I will see you guys next time for another lecture.